Hello, Daniel Ritchie, developer of Howler, and I'd like to talk to you about the new features in Howler 9.6. Uh, I'd like to cover them as quickly as possible uh, because we've got quite a few of them. So let's just take a brief look at what we have. Uh, the duplicate frames tool coming in 9.6. Uh, say you have an animation loaded and you needed to... Uh, you found out that you had drop frames from your camera or that uh, you had duplicate frames uh, because your video was transcoded to the wrong time uh, signature. Uh, well, that could be bad. Um, drop frames uh, don't generally look good. They cause stuttering in your video um, and uh, various other problems. So let's see. I'll just simulate this uh, using this video by inserting a couple extra frames. And we'll go to the drop frame tool. And it will search through your video. And we'll find the frames that are duplicate. Uh, at this point you can delete them. You can blend them and create new frames. Or you can extrapolate new frames using motion prediction. Uh, I'm not going to do that now. In fact, I'll uh, move along to the next feature. Because that's fairly involved. We have done videos on that already. Let's see... Uh, new feature, green screen compositing tool. Alright, so since I already have this available, I'm going to go to the swap screen just to create some kind of uh, something in the background here that I'll have to do. Going into composite with swap, click green screen. You can see the new green screen tool has uh, quite a few new options. Um, there is uh, color matrix lets you do color adjustments for red, green, blue, uh, hue adjustment, saturation, value, brightness, contrast, and gamma. This lets you do color correction on your green screen compositing. Um, the uh, the artificial green uh, sliders have been re renamed uh, green removal to be more descriptive of what it does. As you can see, there's a green border around this from the green screen. You can slide that and remove uh, green from her uh, and so on all right so let's move on our next feature is the re uh, revamped camera stabilization stabilization and tracking tool all right well we happen to have a track marker uh, which we can use um, the tool has been re rewritten and it is let's see under filter animated and stabilize alright new options include the ability to set which channel you want to use um, and also the ability to rest which frame you want to reference if you want to reference the last frame or the first frame alright uh, let's see these are useful for uh, fine-tuning your motion tracking the motion tracker lets you either stabilize camera motion or remove it completely um, this is useful for uh, simplifying effects work such as rotoscoping or uh, gar removing garbage from uh, frames such as, uh, well, we have this um, part of the green screen that's, uh, well, it's behind the green screen and we have some boards and stuff in there. You might want to stabilize it, remove it, and then, and then reapply the motion after you've removed the, the garbage in the frame. That is the stabilization filter. Uh, you also have the ability, ability to smooth the camera motion, which is sort of like uh, camera stabilization built into a camcorder. So uh, that has been rewritten. It's much more accurate now and some new features as well. There's revamped navigation and uh, let's see, zooming from the pointer instead of the center and also scroll bars, which has been added to the, the program. Uh, let's see. Previously, navigation was accomplished either on the toolbar by using these tools or with the Control Shift keyboard shortcut, um, as you see there. Um, using the right mouse button will let you zoom in and out. Using Control and Shift in the right mouse button or the left mouse button will let you uh, pan and tilt. So, this has been improved by letting you zoom in and out in a specific area instead of from center. Say I picked this blue area, I wanted to zoom in on that. I can now zoom directly in on that instead of zooming directly from the center of the image. Or if I wanted to uh, see what this thing over here was, I can zoom in on that now. 
that is one small improvement, uh, which I think users have asked for for a while now, and we were happy to put that in there. All right. Um, and I said there was the ability to you to use um, optionally to use scroll bars. We have shied away from using scroll bars in the past because they use a lot of screen of real estate, and they uh, it takes two clicks to, to scroll anything. You have to scroll up and down or left to right, and it takes a, a click for each of those. Uh, it's kind of not as easy as just using the control shift and, and moving around interactively like that. But we realized on tablets and other types of devices that are uh, not mouse driven that you might want scroll bars. So we've added that under settings, use scroll bars, and that will remember, once you've saved that, that will remember that option. So I'm going to click use for now. And as you see, you can now scroll via the scroll bars. All right, moving along. We have a new vector blur tool, which is a uh, nice tool for creating uh, cinematic blurs. Um, normally, blurs would be blurred in every direction, but in the case of uh, certain effects, you want to achieve a blur that only blurs in one direction, which is uh, horizontally and straight across. Very useful for um, anamorphic type lens type blurs. All right, moving along, trying to do this quickly under 10 minutes. Uh, see garbage masking for video using alt and the rectangle ellipse tool let's see say you wanted to remove um, the stuff that's uh, in this shot we'll click on the comma key to get the color picker we will go to the rectangle tool or the ellipse tool we'll also do this hold down alt draw a rectangle and it will for every frame go through and draw that rectangle on every frame very useful uh, and we if we stabilize this with the camera stabilizer it would make it easier because those things wouldn't be moving around back and forth uh, like they were there uh, let's see new benchmarking tool uh, under window settings general and threading and GPU there's a benchmark button this gives you uh, some basic uh, image processing uh, features um, useful for testing the speed of your processor against other processors very useful um, they use Photoshop for a benchmark they use um, Cinema 4D has a, a benchmark Maxline has a Cinebench so we figured well that tests 3D performance and uh, other types of performance they have um, one that tastes Test uh, gaming performance, so why not one that tests image process processing performance? Because that's something people work with a lot as well. Um, tools for single point match moving. Uh, this is a little bit of an involved subject, but let's see if I have an example under my. Let's see on the beta list, we have. Beta list. <laughs> we have some examples of match moving. Um, this this is done with the same green screen, and we inserted some video, some background uh, a background into this video. And as you can see, the camera is moving. So we've matched this background to this. Uh, to this footage that we had. This is accomplished through the brush keyframe where you load a brush in, a custom brush. It can be larger than your screen if you like. And you go to animation, brush keyframer, and there's a track brush option there. And that will take you through the various steps. We've done videos on that if you want to find out more about that. And Moving along, there is also support for higher resolution monitors. Uh, let's see, I'm on 1600 by something right now, so I can't show this. But basically, um, some of the tools, such as the rectangle tool, which previously had three stack panels, will only have two. This part will be moved over here, and uh, that's about all there is to that. It makes it a little more, gives you a little more space. Um, there is a revamped animatable rubber sheet. Uh, filter or tool say you wanted to uh, move something around in a on a 3d plane 
simple enough to do now. We had this tool before, but it was very old and outdated, so we revamped it completely. Rubber sheet under the transform menu gives you a four corner perspective correct 3D warping. You can also transform uh, scale and rotate those. Um, and as needed, you have an animate option which lets you create keyframes as well. You can uh, keyframe this and create animated uh, perspective warps. All right, so next is the uh, under the browser is the how did I put this? The ability to load directly to stored images from the browser. All right, go to the browser and say. Um, you were working on an image and you didn't want to swap this out with another image but you wanted to load in some resource material simply click on it and click store and it becomes a stored image very simple uh, nice uh, time saver and that is in the browser um, so the next feature is the ability to uh, or the in the menu there's a link to the free transform tool and image for image and alpha um, say you were working with selections um, and you wanted to use the free transform tool to edit that selection uh, you'd have to actually be in one of the um, alpha channel tools otherwise you would not have access to that well that's been moved uh, to the menus so even if you're in say the drawing tool or the paint tool or one of these other tools that doesn't have that button you can go into it and click on selection and free transform and it activates that free transform tool or optionally under the image menu you, you could go to um, free transform and then the image itself becomes transformed not just the alpha channel as you see here and you're able to edit that all right moving along again is color replacer had an issue when animating uh, that was just a bug fix in the color replacer. Um, added a CPU fallback for foliage ambient occlusion that was only available on GPU previously. All right. When painting with the uh, particles tool, you have the option of using um, shadows, which is uh, done through ambient occlusion. Let's see. I'll load a preset. And as you can see, when you draw, um, sort of as a post process, there's this um, the shadow, sort of a self shadowing effect that becomes available. It becomes more pronounced the more you draw, the thicker this becomes. Uh, you can really see it down in here is getting self shadow. Well, that was not formally available on the CPU before it was done on the GPU uh, because of the speed necessary. But we've done what we've done here is we use a slightly lower quality fallback for the CPU. It's, it's pretty fast. It's not quite as fast as it was, but it's reasonable. Um, and if you have the GPU turned off or an unsupported GPU, then you're still able to use that feature. Um, I think we're at the end of the list now. Um, stability bug in the brush keyframer uh, was fixed also, and that's it. That's the list of new features for Howler 9.6. Um, hope you find the program useful. Uh, version 9.5 was the pay update for users. Um, this, if you buy not, if you bought 9.5, you will get this version for free. Um, we are extending the same offer. If you own 9.2 or below, you can upgrade for 20. I think it's 22 dollars. And. Uh, of course, the full version is currently on sale as well. So check with thebest3d.com or my website at squirreldome.com and see what the latest prices are. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy Howler 9.6. Ta-ta for now.